Welcome back. Now let's put aside the trendy and attractiveness for a moment, presented as such by popular YouTubers with big overbuilding puffy bicep shots and skinny but tough big bike climbs and bright colors to attract multiple younger women. To focus on the real historical aspect of veganism. How has it fared in past generations and cultures? Has it thrived around the world or was it short-lived? Has it stood the test of time? Before getting into today's topics, I'd like to mention a few quotes that were sent in and pretty outstanding. However, veganism is a specific lifestyle and is not a plant-based diet. If we're talking about plant-based diets in general, there are typically more vegetarians who eat a vegan plant-based diet quite regularly, so on those plant-based days would be classed as vegan. However, if you're not following the lifestyle of being animal cruelty-free, then you're plant-based and not vegan. So the numbers can be inflated by plant-based diet eaters to true vegans, those who use cruelty-free products as well. My parents are partner of Flexaria, meaning they chose to eat what they want, when they want, but often choose a vegetarian diet most days, and my partner is plant-based most days and vegetarian on occasion. So he'd typically be classed as a vegan, plant-based vegetarian, which would inflate the vegan data. Humans have eaten meat solely literally millions of years. This isn't anything new. What is new is veganism. At best, it's only been around for 75 years. 75 years versus 3 million years. Hmm. Well, not entirely true. As though modern veganism has been around for about 75 years, the earliest of humans said to populate the earth varied from source to source, from 50,000 to 200,000 years, while our ancestors dating back to 6 million. Going back further into veganism's earliest recorded history, we find an article in the Society's magazine, The Vegetarian Messenger, in 1851 discussing alternatives to shoe leather, which suggests the presence of vegans within the membership who rejected animal use entirely, not only in diet. By 1886 publication of Henry S. Salt's A Plea for Vegetarianism and other essays, he asserts that, quote, it is quite true that most, not all, food reformers emit into their diet such animal food as milk, butter, cheese, and eggs. An early vegan cookbook, Robert E. Welchins, no Animal Food, Two Essays and a Hundred Recipes, was published in London in 1910. The consumption of milk and eggs became a battleground over the following decades. There were regular discussions about it in the Vegetarian Messenger, still around at the time. And strangely enough, it appears from the correspondence pages that many opponents of veganism come from vegetarians. According to vegansociety.com, and I'll leave a link below, Vegan Society was established 75 years ago and represents bits and pieces found throughout history. Evidence of people choosing to avoid animal products can be traced back over 2,000 years, but is there evidence? As early as 500 BC, Greek philosopher and mathematician Pythagoras promoted benevolence among all species and followed what could be described as a vegetarian diet. Although the same time Siddhartha Gautama, better known as Buddha, was discussing vegetarian diets with his followers, many vegans refused to acknowledge the connection between religion and veganism. Here, but ah, it's openly sourced. Back in the timeline, Fruitlands, a short-lived vegan community, was established in 1844 by Amos Bronson Alcott and Charles Lane in Harvard, Massachusetts. This utopian agrarian commune established in the 1840s was based on transcendentalist principles. An account of its less than successful activities can be found in Transcendental Wild Oats by Alcott's daughter, Louisa May Alcott. Lane purchased what was known as the Wyman Farm and its 90 acres, which also included a dilapidated house and barn. Residents of Fruitlands ate no animal substances, drank only water, bathed in unheated water, and no artificial light would prolong dark hours or cost them the brightness of morning, quote-unquote. Additionally, property was held communally and no animal labor used. Amos Alcott came here with the idea of Fruitlands in 1841. He traveled to England the following year 
where he hoped to find support and people to participate with him in the experiment. One of his supporters was Charles Lane. The community attracted 14 residents, including Alcott and Lane families. By July, the community had succeeded in planting eight acres of grains, one of vegetables, and one of melons. On July 8th, Rolf Waldo Emerson visited along with Eli Channing. Although he was impressed by the serenity of the site and the idea of hard work, he cautiously recorded, I will not prejudge them successful. They look well in July. We'll see them in December. The community was short-lived and lasted only seven months. It was dependent on farming, which turned out to be too difficult. The original farmhouse, along with other historical buildings from the area, is now part of the Fruitlands Museum. Fruitlands ultimately failed the winter after it opened, largely due to farm shortages and accompanying unrest in the inhabitants. The rigors of New England winter proved too severe for the members of Fruitlands. Many of Alcott's and Lane's ideas were derived from transcendentalism. Alcott's view of transcendentalism was sort of a religious anarchism, a renunciation of the world to focus on the spirit. Alcott and Lane believed that the community could achieve complete freedom only by eliminating economic activity altogether. The biggest challenge, though, proved to be farming, and the decision to not use animal labor on the farm proved to be the undoing of the commune, combined with the fact that many of the men of the commune spent their days teaching or philosophizing instead of working in the field. November 1944, Donald Watson called a meeting with five other non-dairy vegetarians, including Ali Shrigley, founded a new movement. Donald Watson later described as containing the first three and last two letters of vegetarian. In the words of Donald Watson, it marked, quote, the beginning and the end of vegetarian. In 1949, before Leslie J. Cross pointed out that the society lacked a definition of veganism, he suggested, quote, the principle of the emancipation of animals by exploitation by man, quote. This is later described, clarified as, to seek an end to the use of animals by man for food, commodities, work, hunting, vivisection, and all other activities involving the exploitation of animal life by man, end quote. Final thoughts. We'd love to know your thoughts and conclusions, but it isn't hard to deduce that history has not favored veganism in any way. In fact, it hasn't even been close, as there have not been existed any multi-generational records of success worldwide. There really isn't that much data, if at all, on veganism taking place and surviving in South America or Africa, for example, while we do have records of the vegetarian counterparts. When we talk about veganism, it is fairly accurate to say the most success or even cohesiveness has taken place in the last 75 years, roughly compared to hundreds of thousands of years to millions, depending on if you wish to group non-modern man, homo sapiens, into the census. Most of veganism's recorded attempts are riddled and racked with problems and intrinsic oppositions, whether individual or group. Henry S. Salt's essays make a plea for vegetarianism, not veganism, and he acknowledges the reality of those attempts to follow such a diet among the practitioners. In London back in the day, proponents of the recognized was actually vegetarians who were the biggest opponents of veganism, not the meat eaters. Very interesting compared to today's, where carnivore is seen as the biggest threat. Why were vegetarians at the time so opposed to veganism? Was it they had developed such a long ingrained cultural or taste filled with love for dairy or other animal products? Or did they see and feel it necessary for their very survival? Something at the cellular level. Vegansociety.com claims that evidence exists for humans have chose to avoid consuming animal products to 2,000 years. But is there really any evidence? Pythagoras and Buddha may have promoted a more vegetarian lifestyle, but once again, there's no significant proof the movement ever really grew and it wasn't strict veganism. At least there was a mention of some correlation between religion and veganism, which we'll take a look at more in the future. Fruitlands was the best documented vegan experiment to date. How did it fare? Well, 
is seven months any indication? While some blame the location in the winter season, according to the date that these were the data, that these were not the main causes responsible for its unsuccessful outcome. Really a worthwhile undertaking, and it would have been amazing and fantastic if it would have succeeded, but just wasn't the case. It wasn't like they didn't have the land, support, or crops. Why did Donald Watson and others have such a struggle and took so long, years, to officially arrive at a definition for veganism? Out of all the ways they could have defined it, even with the history between veganism and vegetarianism, he still chose to derive from, quote, the beginning and the end of vegetarian. That's huge. Was it really only a play on words or letters, or were they implying something greater, something more telling? That is, in order for veganism to thrive, vegetarian has to end. Something very interesting to note is there was no mention of health or diet in their definition for veganism. Whoa, is it really then that credible to use such an argument today for our health, for our highest well-being, when the modern founders did not even see it fit to include in the original definition? Thanks for watching, and stay tuned in part two We'll learn a little more about the recent history as it relates to the burden of proof veganism must make to overcome its past. We here at Got Vegan would love to hear from your thoughts, and if you come across any credible, verifiable vegan generational studies, please post them down below. Thank you.